Hang on a sec. What's this we found down the back of the couch? Well, looks like a bonus episode of the Couple of Blokes podcast. With huge thanks to our mates at the ENS Trading Clearance Centre, they're in Dandenong Road, Clayton, just opposite IKEA. But now, let's sit back and see what Ox and Marco are banging on about today. We don't do this t- too often, but we know we've got a long weekend coming up. It is the King's Birthday Weekend, and of course, the Pies take on the D's on Monday. It is Big Freeze number 10. Huge. And unfortunately, you have been in the fetal position ever since your team ca- got oh. back from Ayers Rock. Oh. What happened there? What What Can you please explain what happened? Because I saw the start of the game and I thought, geez, the D's are on. Yeah, we don't like the Alice, to be honest. Um, <laughs> too, I, th- I thought it was a fortress. Too rough for us. Too <laughs> rough up there in the Alice for our boys. <laughs> Oh good! I don't know what happened. They were bad. Like I've I've seen Melbourne play ordinary yeah. over, over the journey. That's as bad as I've seen them play. What, was it a little bit of Frio though? I mean, did Frio? No, yeah, that's okay, but not ninety-two points worth. Because all the shows I saw, they first focus in on the demons, and then they go, "Oh, but the but Frio played incredible." It doesn't matter how good Frio play. The list, if you yeah. match the lists up, it's not it's not ninety-two points. You know, we're not talking about Nat Fyfe, you know, in prime or Matthew Pavlich is making a comeback. Yeah. Like, we're talking about Walters kicking a bag and oh, – anyway. Do you think it's worth them selling the game for, for – Well, they've been doing it for a long time, yeah. so – But it, not it, successfully. No, no, I, th- I, I think their strike rate's about 50%. Yeah, so we're, you're we're, on the wrong end of selling yeah, home games. Yeah, so – but we had to do that because we weren't getting a crowd. Now that we are getting crowds, like our crowds have been really good. Um, but if they keep that shit up – uh, it won't be any good. So, were you missing anybody? I'm, I'm just scratching my head. I don't think you're that down and Barassi, uh, <laughs> Flower, Schwartz. Uh, <laughs> no, we weren't. Uh, there's a couple. There's a couple missing, but not 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 huge. Uh, Van Ruin didn't play. Yeah, you know, we're not talking about superstars missing the game. So, you oh, come, and Jake Lever was the biggest one. So, you come up one. against the Pies. Well, you we don't have the Goey. Don't have Pendlebury. Don't have Elliot. Don't have Will Hoskin. Elliot. Your side's in trouble, mate. Just everywhere. What's going you look. on? I don't know what is going on, but um, you know when you hear Craig McRae speak, uh, some of the shorter breaks and uh, the little bit of travel that we've done has come at this time of the year. And you and just had a buy, or no? You played no, last. You played I, last Thursday. I think yeah. our buy is coming up pretty soon. Yeah, ours is after this game as but well. But the, the the Magpies, they look like they need the buy more than yeah. any other squad in the competition. Are you confident? No, not at all. In fact, I've given you the game. So it's only a possible shower or two. The weather is pathetic uh, over the next five days, but that day might be clear. Will they get 80,000? Yeah. It's yes. your home game. Yeah, they will. It's I your think, home game. I think it's already sold out. What, the G? I think it is. I'm pretty sure I read that the other day. Uh, well, I, hope, could be, I could be wrong. Well, I hope it is. I hope it is. And if you do, if you get a chance, go and buy yourself a beanie. It's a wonderful cause and they do a great so job. So you tell me, okay, because you've been in this position, I'm sure. You've put in a bad one. And the coach gets you on the Monday or the Tuesday and says, okay, you lost by 10 goals. You're coming up against this mob. Tell me the mentality yep. of you're on notice. of recovering from a bad yeah. outing. Yeah, you'll go through it, but you're on notice. We'll accept it as a one-off, but they got beaten by West Coast two weeks before that. This is a one-off. You do it again, and you're going to be losing your spot. So, and, and, and it's that brutal with some of them. Like There's some there's some players that are untouchable, like Max yeah. Gorn and Petrarca and Oliver and that. But you've got 10 players on that list that their spot could be up for grabs. You know, it might be a Lockie Hunter or it could be a Caleb Windsor or a Bowie or a Bowie or whatever. So they they will be given the message. You got to sharpen up, or you might have to go back and find some form. So, and, and that's the biggest that's the biggest deterrent, I reckon. So when does that sharpening up start? I, I imagine it starts the next time you put the boots on, oh, yeah, and training, yep. and and that ball better not hit the ground, sort of stuff, yep. or is it just effort? Uh, both, both. But they'll they'll be told in no uncertain circumstances. You need to find form. You need to start delivering, and it comes at the first contest against Collingwood. And, and and if Melbourne were to play Collingwood after what happened, they'd want to get them now because they're they're yeah. injured. No, and, it's and a perfect time to get the and pies. they're beaten. And but it's a huge game for both. And but I think the game is it's half irrelevant really compared to what the day symbolises. So you know, raising funds and awareness, it'd be a great game, no no doubt. And the one thing about Collingwood, you know, they're going to play. You know, you don't give up like Melbourne gave up last week. And Melbourne gave up. Mm. They they just. They had no. When I say they gave up, they just had no answers. They yeah. weren't able to halfway through the game manipulate it back in their favour. It was over. So last week we had six players that 
played below a combined 10 games yep. of footy. And when the Doggies took over in the last quarter, stand those up. players kicked it out of bounds. Yep. They made the silly mistakes that the experienced yep. old heads just wouldn't have made. So those blokes more than likely will be back in this week yep. playing on an occasion like this. So Huge. Can you remember actually playing a game and there was a young fella who might have come in. It was a big occasion game. What are they like before they yeah, run out there? Well, some can play really well. Like Brad Green, I saw him in the final series in 1990. Uh, was it 99? Uh, I think it was 99 or 2000. He came on into the finals, uh, kicked three goals in the last quarter to win us a final against the Blues. Some young kids can step up. Collingwood, Collingwood develop their kids really well. So when they come in, they normally, they're fit, they're healthy. But the problem is you're probably playing players that are maybe six months or a year before their time mm. because of, you know, it's like Richmond. But then you can get youth and, you know, we saw Richmond win last night on the back of youth and, you know, just having a go and, you know, not caring. And yeah. and sometimes that, that can play in your favour. But you still need your, your bona fide stars. And Collingwood, they're not just losing players 10 to 20. They're losing Three, you know, to go is in their top five. Yeah, Elliot Pendlebury. El- 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 Pendlebury. You know, Mason Cox is, even though he's not your best player, he's bloody important in your structure. Well, last week when we needed someone to take a mark on the wing, it, normally you can rely on Cox to take a couple of marks in those situations. Didn't have him. It didn't have him. No. And as ordinary, uh, you're talking about Richmond Adelaide last night, as ordinary as Adelaide are, I don't think too many people would have tipped the Tigers. No, nah, very few. And I love it. I, I, I'm a. I love Adam Uze. I love his coaching. A huge loss when he left Melbourne. I, I'm, I know my Melbourne group were cheering on Richmond, and we never cheer on Richmond. Mm. Like they're the arch enemy, but we were cheering on Richmond because of Uze. P- Pies and Melbourne, I want to tip. Who D, wins? D's Who by wins? two goals. Uh, Collingwood by two points. Uh, what Don't about tonight, Ox? We've got uh, the Western Bulldogs taking on Brizzy. I, I, I think the Doggies are the real deal. I think the Doggies, they get um, Liberatore back. Norton is a bit of an issue, but they've got enough up forward. Darcy not playing, yep. which is a killer. But no, their midfield's good enough. I think Brisbane's form's ordinary, and the Doggies get the chocolates. Just on Darcy, the rising star, no Darcy, no Harley Reid. Surely that is now a completely compromised award. Well, it's not compromised, but it shouldn't. the fairest shouldn't come into it. It should no. be just the best first-year player, mm. or, or if you fit in that category. It's, unless you've punched someone in the face. Yeah, unless it's a deliberate act, like a hip and shoulders, like seriously. Yeah. yeah. Like their timing, it's not a it's not a premeditated effort. Yeah, so I, I agree. I hate it. Anyway, uh, good luck to Caleb Windsor. I think he wins it. I agree. I I, I agree with both suspensions for the yeah. players, but I don't agree. I think it should just be a if it's a it's non a if it's a non football act, um, that's when you lose. Uh, yep. The rising star. Yep. Doggies Brisbane. You're on doggies ox. Doggies for me, Mark. Uh, yeah, doggies tonight. All right. Hawthorne GWS. Uh, Hawks have surprised us. The hell out of me. They're playing. They they're just good. They they play on. They get the ball going forward. They surely can't beat GWS. This is a game that GWS must win. GWS sitting on the ladder uh, currently in seventh. If they want to keep the top eight, they've got to deliver, and they have to deliver now. So GWS for me. Marco, what about you? GWS Hawks. Who wins? Uh, no, I, I think the Giants for exactly the same reasons. Oxford mentioned West Coast and North Mel. Oh, God, West Coast and North Melbourne. Jeez. What a riveting game this will be. Two teams who are really struggling. They'll have a go. West Coast footy's improved and North Melbourne North Melbourne can play a quarter or two. They'll get beaten North Melbourne. I, I can't see them winning a game this year. Um, no I, Harley I, Reid. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. But I'd love to mm. see North Melbourne win. Yeah. I really would. Yeah, I, I really would. Well, if they don't win this one, I don't think there's too many more chances in the rest of the season. I think they play the to Tigers towards the end of the year. So yeah. for you, it's West Coast Ox, Mark? Just. No, West Coast will beat North Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, no, a- I, over in Perth. No, yeah. I think that's right. Question for you, Ox: Should North Melbourne get a priority pick? Or yes, not? I believe they should. Yeah. It's, it, considering they lost Torn Francis, uh, they weren't able to to keep him because of form and whatever. But they've I, got number one picks, you know, one, two, and three picks yeah, in the I, last ten years. I don't reckon. I don't reckon the. I, I reckon they should have a a, a gift, a, a trade gift, or a points given more points. So. They can't go to the draft. They've got to go and find some established players and they don't have to pay as many points. I would like to see some sort of system where they can help them get some experienced players in rather than just going and getting the babies. Yep, okay. Uh, St Kilda versus the Gold Coast at Marvel. No chance, St Kilda. 
Gold Coast win this game. First away win if they do, which would be big. Gold Coast win this game. Gold Coast have not won, with the exception of Northern Territory, have not won a game away from yep, home. Yep, that's right. So and they will this weekend. Yep. And uh, two reasons. St Kilda travelling back from the west and the Gold Coast Suns are a bona fide good team. I think St Kilda are still celebrating after winning that thing. Uh, it goes with the club. So I, I reckon Gold Coast are going to take them down Gold as Coast, well. yep. Okay, Geelong are playing Sydney up in Sydney. And uh, GOT, the Catters have really... Uh, geez, they're in a world of pain at the moment, aren't they're they? Not, they're not without a chance, though. Like, the Cats' good footy is really good. I think Sydney's midfield will be too good. But, but uh, when I say this, this will be closer than what people think. I'm, I'm tipping a couple of kicks. So if Sydney win this game, that means... The Cats have lost five in the last six. Yeah. It's enormous, isn't yeah. it? Because our premiership favourites not yep. too long ago. Yep, and they've come back to earth. Right, eh? It's incredible, though, when you think about Geelong. They have lost whatever it's four or five in a row, and they're still top four in the ladder. Yeah. I mean, yeah it just well, shows, shows how good their start of the season was. Yep, seven straight. King's birthday eve is going to be a ripper, Dan. Esther and Carlton Knox. For goodness sake, they're the two sides that I least like. <laughs> I'm tipping Carlton. I'm tipping Carlton because of their forward line. I, 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 look, Eston are playing good footy, mm. no doubt. I just want to see how they stack up against all the really good sides. They've beaten GWS. They've drawn with Collingwood. I just They fell over to Gold Coast, which was a pretty pretty mm. hot game. I just want to see what they're like against a decent, and I mean decent players, experienced big body players. They haven't come up against mm. that yet. I'll tip Carlton. Well done. Oh, I think the Blues will win this one as yeah. well. It's the game of the round, I reckon. Yeah, for sure. It's yeah. one of the games of the year. Like, yeah. like these two sides hate each other, and they're both in good form. And it'll be a great round of footy. Eighty-five thousand at the MCG on King's birthday eve. Hey, uh, I've been in the car a lot listening to you commentate too. Good on you. Yeah, no. you are absolutely braining it. And Thank they you. put you next to Jared Waitley, their number one last week, and that oh, was fabulous. Well, it was only because Jared asked. Um, so <laughs> anyway, we'll just see how it goes and uh, enjoying it. All right, boys, enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the long weekend, and we'll see you next Wednesday. We'll see you. Bye. And thanks for listening to the Couple of Blokes podcast with Ox and Marco. And if you get a chance to share it with a friend, that'd be fantastic. Massive thanks to the team at the ENS Trading Clearance Centre in Clayton on Dandenong Road. And if you're not in Melbourne, you can check them out online. Some massive savings. Couple of Blokes executive producer is Dan Bradley at Kaizen Media. And sound design from Daryl Misson at loudzebra.com. We'll see you next time.